Has SpaceX's heat shield problem been solved yet? Latest Perseverance rover update. Hey, I'm Lucas. Welcome to the SpaceX community. Let's get started. Hello, everyone. Today we're discussing a crucial topic we haven't covered in a while. Can you guess what it is? Yes, it's the Starship's heat shield tiles. We're all aware that the heat shield crisis has been a persistent challenge for SpaceX's Starship program, and with the fourth Starship flight fast approaching, this issue has become more pressing than ever. The reliability of the heat shield is critical for the spacecraft's successful re-entry into Earth's atmosphere and its reusability. The heat shield's complexity lies in its delicate balance of adhesion, heat resistance, lightness, and reusability. The main concern is ensuring the tiles adhere properly, as even a single broken or fallen tile can compromise the entire heat shield's effectiveness, with potentially catastrophic consequences. During the integrated flight tests 1 and 2, a significant number of the Starship's thermal protection system, TPS tiles, were falling off, which raised concerns about the spacecraft's ability to withstand the intense heat generated during re-entry. However, during IFT-3, the number of tiles falling off was significantly reduced, indicating improvements in the TPS design and attachment method. Despite this progress, the S-28 still experienced control issues during re-entry, which ultimately prevented it from reaching its final destination. This suggests that while the TPS improvements were a step in the right direction, there are still underlying issues which still has to be addressed. You know, the vibrations from the Raptor engines can cause tiles to collide and crack, leading to their eventual loss. To address this, SpaceX has explored increasing the distance between tiles, modifying their shape to a pyramid-like structure, and optimizing surface roughness for improved hydrodynamics. Additionally, reducing the size of the tiles could address the issue of heat-resistant tiles. This approach acknowledges the challenges posed by acoustic reflection of the explosions and vibrations transmitted from the launch pad, and testing smaller tiles, especially at joints on the vehicle, could alleviate the vibration problem at these critical joints. Now, you may be wondering whether SpaceX has made any improvements for the next Starship launch, that is, Flight 4 prototypes. Yes, of course. They have made significant upgrades to tackle the heat shield challenge. Ship 29, sitting atop Booster 11, was set aside for a month to undergo thorough examinations and tile replacements. The new tiles on the nose cone demonstrate a technological shift in SpaceX's approach to heat shields. By addressing adhesion, heat resistance and reusability, SpaceX aims to create a reliable and efficient heat shield. The team has switched from a blue tile glue to a new red adhesive, ensuring the tiles remain securely attached under extreme mechanical and thermal pressure. However, using only glue or metal pins is not a viable solution due to aerodynamic and thermal protection concerns. The nose cone and leading wing edges of the Starship play a crucial role in its aerodynamics and thermal protection during atmospheric entry and flight. Metal pins could disrupt the spacecraft's aerodynamic profile, increasing drag during re-entry. Adhesive bonds create a smoother surface, minimizing aerodynamic disturbances and optimizing performance. The adhesive also helps distribute heat more evenly, enhancing thermal protection and preventing hot gases from penetrating the spacecraft's structure. If you've been following the Starship program for a while, you might have an idea where they drew inspiration for the heat shield tiles. Do you? SpaceX's heat shield tiles draw inspiration from NASA's Space Shuttle program. The shuttle's porous and low-density tiles were problematic, and attaching them securely was challenging. Despite this, the shuttle's technology has greatly benefited Starship's TPS, addressing and improving upon its weaknesses. Starship's design prioritizes rapid reusability, necessitating a highly reliable insulating shield. Unlike the shuttle, which was mounted on the side of its external tank and thus vulnerable to impacts from foam and ice debris, Starship's design positions the upper stage atop the lower stage, avoiding this specific risk. 
The Starship team faces numerous challenges in perfecting its thermal protection system. However, by addressing the weaknesses of NASA's Space Shuttle technology and innovating new solutions, SpaceX is making significant progress. The heat shield's complexity demands a multifaceted approach, and SpaceX's commitment to reliability and reusability is driving the development of cutting-edge technology. As SpaceX prepares for the fourth Starship flight, the heat shield's reliability is crucial for a successful re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. The heat shield crisis may have been a significant challenge, but I am sure that their determination and innovative spirit have turned it into an opportunity for growth and progress. I'd like to quickly remind you to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We regularly upload informative SpaceX and Space News videos that you won't want to miss. Be sure to turn on the notification bell so you're notified whenever we release new content. NASA's Perseverance Mars rover has made a groundbreaking discovery that could potentially rewrite the history of life on Mars. The rover's project scientist, Kenneth Farley, recently briefed the Extraterrestrial Materials Analysis Group, XMAG, on the findings, which have left scientists buzzing with excitement. At the center of the excitement is the Lefroy Bay sample a rock core collected from the margin unit in Jezero Crater, which contains hydrated silica, a mineral that on Earth has the highest potential to preserve signs of ancient life. The margin unit is a geological formation in Jezero Crater that is believed to have formed in a lake bed or shoreline environment. The fact that the Leafroy Bay sample contains hydrated silica along with abundant carbonate and silica indicates that liquid water played a dominant role in its formation. This raises the possibility of an ancient habitable Martian environment, and the samples could potentially preserve biosignatures, signs of life that could have existed on Mars billions of years ago. Farley emphasized the importance of returning these samples to Earth for further study, as they could provide valuable insights into the Martian environment and potential life. The Lefroy Bay sample and two other samples from the same unit, the Margin Unit, are on board Perseverance, Farley told Space.com. The Margin Unit samples have abundant carbonate and silica, clearly indicating a dominant role for liquid water in their formation. However, he noted that it is still unclear whether the water was surface water in a lake, or river, or groundwater. The Perseverance rover has been exploring Jezero Crater since its landing in February 2021 and has traversed some 17 miles of Martian terrain. The rover's primary objective is to seek signs of ancient life and collect samples of rock and regolith for possible return to Earth. The rover has collected a variety of samples, including igneous rocks, mudstone, sandstone pebble conglomerate, carbonate silica olivine, as well as Martian atmosphere. Ten sealed sample tubes have been dropped at a depot location dubbed Three Forks in Jezero Crater, with the intention of being retrieved by a future Mars Sample Return, MSR mission. The MSR mission is a joint effort between NASA and the European Space Agency, ESA, and is currently undergoing a re-evaluation due to a projected $11 billion price tag and concerns about the time required to complete the mission. However, the Perseverance rover continues to make progress, with Farley noting that it is just about to make a really fundamental transition in the exploration of the environment that we have been working in. Jezero Crater was chosen as the landing site for the Perseverance rover because it was once flooded with water and is believed to have been home to an ancient river delta. Scientists hope that the crater will provide insights into the on-again, off-again nature of Mars's wet past and potentially reveal evidence of microbial life that may have existed in the lake bed or shoreline sediments. The crater's geology is complex, with multiple layers of sedimentary rock that provide a window into the Martian past. Thanks for watching today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for another great video tomorrow.